Welcome back to Doug Dimmodome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmodome, and we are uh, talking about it being you who escaped through the air vent. So, yeah. As the prosecution has held all along, no less, the defendant has admitted to being at the scene. Might we take this as a confession? No, he's clearly denied that he did it. I know shooting, manager on the floor, already on the floor. My favorite voice to do has returned, I love it. The victim had already been shot, you say? I find that hard to believe. The defendant understood the song lyrics, he was at the scene of the crime. This can only mean one thing, he is the shooter. Does the defendant have anything to say to this? He's clammed up, Apollo. Then let's ask Mr. Justice. Will you require any further testimony from the witness? Is that it? Is there nothing else I can get him to testify about? There's gotta be something. Uh, apparently, apparently Apollo's got it. What is it, buddy? Help me. The cocoon! And the smuggling! He had him up his ass! We gotta get him to confess. A smuggler. Flashbacks, though. Gotta love dim flashbacks! Oh my god, still going, huh? We're still here? We're still doing it? Okay, here we are. The cocoon has to have something to do with this. Something. Tell us the truth for your own sake. No, no more speak. Not to any of you. So much for your precious trust, f -head. Hey, you were the one who didn't believe him. Regardless, this brings us to an impasse. It does seem that the defense and defendant are at odds. I doubt we are likely to learn anything more of value should this continue. I see no other course but to declare a five-minute recess. Oh, shit. Okay. Didn't we just, like, barely start this trial? The last video was the only, uh... The only video that was part of the trial. We're already doing a recess? I wonder if I can finish this case before lunch. I got an hour. <laughs> uh, oh my god! Apollo Eustis? Holy shit! That's what I'm calling him from now on. Oh, Apollo Eustis. Like Eustace from Courage the Cowardly Dog. That's justice. Better learn how to say it if you ever want to get some. What the fuck? <laughs> that sounded really weird. <laughs> when you just say it like that. Believe, I know shooting. Machi claims Mr. Latouse was already down on the ground when he entered the room. Can we get, like, every single character from now on, forever, speaking in broken English? Because that's so much fun. Maybe. It was a trap, and he walked right into it. Suddenly, I hear revolver. Close. Very close. Then, I hear voice. You heard gunshots? Yes, is true. I hear revolver, but only sound. Wait, you're saying you went into the dressing room? And found Mr. Latouse already dead, and then you heard shots? Wait, what the fuck? If that's true... If that's true... Finish that sentence. If that's true, what? You were at the scene of the crime and you heard those shots? And you escaped through the air vent. I know. Huh? What do you know? I know if I open the vent, I can leave stage and back... Backstage. So the vents went to both the stage and the backstage area. Is that what he means? He's right, look, Apollo. Oh, yeah. But how did you know it was connected like that? Wait, I bet his father was the art. What? I will bet you any amount of money that that is not the case. I hear this from Magician. Magician? Don't look at me! A magician, huh? Well, at least there we're clear on one thing. Mashi didn't shoot Mr. Latus. Yeah, but what does that leave us with? We're supposed to say he went into the room to find the body, and then he heard the shots? That one's going to go over well in court. This case is fucking weird, man. I have no idea. I have n Even still, I have no idea. There's twists and turns around every corner. I'll just pretend you misheard him. <laughs> every time. So, what do we do? You're sure you won't testify, Machi? I... no talking, no. Hmm, well, it was worth a shot. A cocoon. Can't go... the, 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 the flashback... the flashbacks. We're flashing back because of stuff is to stuff and there's a guy to see, to see it again and we got it. Okay. Of course, he's scared. Oh well, I guess we'll just have to try a different approach. 
That's the spirit, Apollo. So what's your plan? If Machi won't testify about it, we'll have to get someone else to testify. Someone else? I think we're out of time. Let's get back in there. Right. All right, well, this is... This doesn't seem like it's going to go any better. I have many questions still. Mr. Justice? Eustace? Have you sorted things out with the defendant? Yes, Your Honor. We had a good talk. Mm, very well. So will he testify? Your Honor, the defendant will not testify. What? Shame. And here I thought this was your big chance to turn the case around. Actually, it is. The defense would like to approach this case from a different angle, Your Honor. A different angle? If Machi won't testify, then I know who will. I would like to cross-examine the witness in this case, Lemoir. Lemoir? What are you up to now? I thought we determined yesterday that Lemoir's testimony was insubstantial. There's nothing you can... Lemoir was taken to the hospital yesterday with injuries. What happened? She was assaulted, Your Honor. Assaulted? Like my french fries? Someone wanted Lemoir dead. Thankfully, she was able to save herself. What? I've heard no such report. Prosecutor Gavin? Why would anyone be out to kill Lemoir? Can you think of a reason? Well, think of how she is known in our country. A singer from overseas who doesn't speak English, yes? Yet someone tried to keep her mouth shut. Who could that have been? You don't think? I do. It was the same person who shot Mr. Latouse. The killer was afraid of her, afraid of what she might say. The defense believes that something was hidden in her testimony yesterday. Something that the killer doesn't want getting out. So am I to understand that this is what you are saying? Namely, that there is a nugget of truth in Lamoire's testimony. A nugget we have yet to uncover? Exactly. If Lamoire was attacked, this has serious implications. Very well. There were some vague points in her testimony during yesterday's trial. Perhaps we did not inquire as deeply as we might have into some. The court will hear Lamoire's testimony once more. Just make it quick. All this talk of nuggets makes me really want to go to McDonald's and get some good old chicken McNuggets. Have you had those? I'll get some from my friend's dying son as well. He would like them. We must ask you to stand again and speak. You need not apologize. I know that Machi is innocent, and I will do all that I can until the court realizes this. Let's review your testimony from yesterday. You told us you heard two gunshots in the shooter's voice through the window, and that the voice belonged to Darian Crescent, yes? That is correct. At which point I proved she could not be correct. She couldn't have heard any of those things. The small window at the scene was closed and was found to be quite soundproof. You have nothing to say to that, Mr. Justice? I don't know exactly what yet, but I do know there's something there. There is, it seems, much you do not know. And yet it is my duty to hear him out. Perhaps the witness would be so kind as to testify once more to the court. Of course, Your Honor. I was on my way from the stage to the backstage exit. That's when I heard them, Mr. Latouse and the detective. I heard the faint sound of a gunshot and stop. Then I heard another gunshot. There was the smell of gunpowder. I knew I must tell someone, but I was in a hurry, so I kept moving past the small window. Mm, pretty much the same as yesterday's testimony. I am sorry. I am not used to speaking much in this language. Perhaps my descriptions are lacking in some way. Yet everything I have said here is the truth. Then it is my distinct displeasure to say this. What you have said to have happened is impossible. Do I have to repeat myself? Lamor was attacked because of this testimony. What? Trucy? Apollo, you know, for a moment there, you were pretty cool. Maybe I do better when I don't try to think ahead. Yeah, just wing it. Everything's better when you don't think. Perhaps you can coolly cross-examine the witness. Oh, you have no idea. It's going to be the coolest thing that's ever happened. Alright. She was going from the stage to the backstage. She heard them. And there's the gunshot. Two of them. Okay, well, let me go back. Let's do this one first. You heard them. Darian Crescend. I did not know his name at the time, but yes, it was him, the one who took the stand yesterday. How many times do I need to remind you that's impossible? There is no way you could have heard him. 
because the window of the scene was closed. Oh, that's, Apollo said that. Is that why? Of course. Apollo, if we keep asking the same questions as yesterday, we won't get anywhere. She's right. Maybe there's a different angle I can try. Well, if I ask what... I, I want to know what they were talking about, but if I ask that, then they're just going to say, Oh, she couldn't have known what they were talking about because the window was closed. Did you hear anything else? That's not really... I don't know if that would be relevant, but... It could have been. There's some other random sound that'll help us. I want to ask what were they talking about. But I mean, it's just that I think they'll just dismiss it. But I'm going to do it anyway. Let's see what happens. I have given it much reflection, but I was afraid of this. She doesn't remember. I only heard one phrase clearly. A whole phrase. You remember something that was said? Why didn't you say anything yesterday? Though my memory is clear, I was afraid to speak. You see, I do not understand what was said. This could be it, the clue I've been waiting for. Well, what did he say? It was the other man speaking, not Mr. Latouse. The shooter, then. Darien Crescent. Well, what did he say? It's over. Press the switch, now. To light the guitar on fire. What the hell? Switch. And the shooter said this to the victim, Mr. Latouse? I thought it quite strange myself afterward. It is a mystery. What could it possibly mean? Mr. Justice, care to shed some light on this? Uh, I mean, sure, I'd be delighted. It's a very, very vital. Maybe we could add that to the testimony? Maybe, Apollo. Well, okay. I'll press it first, before I present. And it was Detective Darian Crescent's voice? Yes, I am sure of it. It's over. Press the switch. Why would he say that to Mr. Latouse? Apollo... The murder weapon, the revolver, was Mr. Latouse's, right? Yeah, what of it? Maybe when he said press the switch, he really meant to say pull the trigger. Because his English isn't so good. Why would his English not be good? Yeah. Uh, oh. Alright, oh, sorry. Kinda forgot who was what. Press the switch. That's not something a killer usually says to his or her victim, is it? Was there no one else in the room? Well, I... Machi was there after. So that's it. Okay. I do have a switch. It's a remote trigger. Should I present it on this one? I feel like I should. I don't know what else to, to do here. Press the switch. There's only one key that can unlock the mystery of those words. Yet there was nothing at the scene that could be called a switch save the lights. True, there wasn't a switch at the scene, but it just so happens I have a switch right here. I've been playing Breath of the Wild a lot. I got it on launch day. That certainly does look like a switch, doesn't it? The problem is... This was found not at the scene of the crime, but on the stage. The stage? Where the concert was held, yes. This was found hidden there. On the stage? Are you claiming that the voice Lamoir heard was of someone commanding another to press this switch? He could ha I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm gonna stop thinking. Just... Just go with it. Let's just see what happens. Oh, air forehead, I'd call that an impossibility. Why? It's hardly necessary for me to remind the court of the layout of the concert forum. The stage is quite far from Lamoir's dressing room. Not to mention that the Gaviners were in the middle of a concert on said stage. We aren't known for being a quiet band. You could shout all you wanted and not be heard. The detective's voice was loud, but certainly not to shout. So too have Air Forehead's cries of possibility fallen far short of being heard. Sorry. But he wouldn't have needed to shout. Excuse me? You heard what I said, or do you need me to shout it out for you? It would have been quite simple to be heard on the stage from that dressing room. Oh wait, you like evidence, don't you? How about this? 
Using this, it would be easy to get a message to someone on stage from the dressing room. The headset? 30 foot range. And they said that it was all that, that was all within range. So Yeah. Prosecutor Gavin, perhaps you're familiar with this. Why that's What what is it? Is that some kind of newfangled phone they invented while I wasn't looking? This is a type of transmitter, a communications device. Communications device? From what I've heard that night, everyone on stage was wearing on one of these, isn't that right, Prosecutor Gavin? Yes, actually, and they're for talking between band members. We all had one on. So you admit that if you were wearing one of these, talking from the backstage to the stage would be simple. True, but wait, those send out an electronic signal. To avoid interference with the audio systems, their range is quite limited. Lemoir said it was about 30 feet, right? Look at this cross-section diagram of the concert forum. Like, I know this is gonna come back to Darian missing that cue, but I have no idea how. Like, what does that mean? He could have been talking to someone on stage. So he was he was back there telling somebody on stage to flip the switch. What the hell? It could be placed in a pocket and carried anywhere. Someone could have hit it on the stage after the fact. Hey, he's got a point. How do we know where it was when she heard the voice? When the shooter said press the switch. Well, I guess we don't. <laughs> hmm, an unfortunate situation. I'm afraid that until we know where this switch was, there's a little point in debating it. I was sure this was the way to go with this. What is this switch anyway? We don't even know what that know that basic fact. Yes, we do. I do. Wait a second. I do know what this switch is. And if you follow that train of logic to its incredible conclusion, it ends up in proof that completely changes this case. What's up, Apollo? Apollo! We know about this switch, right? We know what it is. Yeah? Well, think of it when it was used that day. Think of what happened. Well, Mr. Justice, if you have no further information to share concerning this switch... Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Eustace? I've been remiss in not telling the court this before. I know what this switch is. Hmm? Well, it seems the defense is set upon linking this switch to the case. Let's see your evidence of the link. What evidence do you have to explain what this switch is? It's for... this. Prosecutor Gavin, you remember this? Ah, that's... That what? Is it another one of those newfangled phones? This is an igniter. What phone looks like this? Igniter, you mean it's like a lighter? Yes, actually. You aren't saying the switch is a remote. I am. This is a remote trigger for an igniter. What? Look, I'll show you. Yup. Mr. Eustace, you will cease and desist from burning down this courtroom. Sorry, that was a bit more fire than I'd expected. If my whiskers had caught on fire... Prosecutor Gavin, let me repeat myself. This switch is a remote igniter trigger. Doesn't that suggest something to you? You're talking about what happened to me, aren't you? Ah, exactly. That night at the concert, there was one unusual burst of flame. Mm -hmm. When your guitar caught fire in the middle of your performance. Wasn't that part of the stage show, though? Prosecutor Gavin was entirely unaware such a thing had been planned. And the guitar that burned was a valuable keepsake. That's right, he got it in Borginia from Lamoire. He said the sound was amazing before it burned, of course. Now it just kind of smokes. The better the guitar, the brighter it burns. Air forehead. Yes? Don't tell me you're trying to tie these two things together. Those being the shooter's voice heard by Lamois. And the guitar suddenly catching on fire. I'm not really sure why you're even humoring me, because... Weren't you saying that it was impossible to hear what was being said? because the window was closed and was soundproof. 
That's why I was hesitant to even choose that option, because I thought he would be like, we can't believe anything that she says because it's impossible for her to have heard. But whatever. I am, it's really simple when you think about it. Mr. Latouche and the shooter were at the crime scene. The shooter was wearing a headset. He ordered someone on stage to press the switch. The switch was pressed and the guitar caught fire. Well, that does seem to make sense. Though something about it is bugging me. Can't quite put my finger on it. Really? That seems pretty simple to me. Air forehead, don't destroy what little respect I have for you. I was expecting something a little more sensible. I guess I was wrong. What's this all about, Prosecutor Gavin? His simple story simply makes no sense. Think, that night my guitar caught fire, yes. The cause may have been this, indeed. However, the guitar caught fire during the second set. That's right, of course. What the fuck is going on? I don't understand anything. There's like time travel going on here, and I am confused. There's clones, and time travel, and I don't even know what's happening. It's just some big-ass magic trick. I don't know. The whole premise for this is faulty. See? His story makes no sense. Are you sure about that? What exactly do you mean, Mr. Eustace? Maybe it's not the premise for my explanation of the switch that's at fault. Maybe it's our premise for the entire case so far. What premise is this, specifically? I'm glad you asked. I'm saying that maybe the killing didn't take place in the third act. What's this? But Detective Emma Sky heard shots and found the body. Yeah, but he said he was he already found Latouche dead and then there were shots. Whoa, dude. All of this happened in the third act. Gunshots rang out, and according to his testimony, Machi was in that dressing room at the time. What are you going with this, Mr. Justice? Stay with me, Your Honor. He also told us this in his testimony, namely that the victim had already been shot. We all heard gunshots, but no one saw the shooting. This... this is insane. Just before the shooting took place, the shooter was heard on his headset, telling someone to press the switch. The next moment, Prosecutor Gavin's guitar burst into flame. We know what a remote-triggered igniter was inside the guitar. From all these facts, we can draw only one conclusion. The crime did not take place during the third act but during the ballad performance, the second act. Oh, shit.